at the more complicated and finessed insert into statement, I want to talk a bit about a query that you've seen parts of before, but you haven't seen in its full implementation. And uh, I will describe that in a second, but let's set some backdrop information here. So I've gone to the database you know very well, the Ironwood database, and I've got student and enrollment grade information. So student is the parent table, enrollment is the child, and I've done an inner join. By doing the inner join, as we see here, we are seeing students who have records in the enrollment table. Even though some values are null here, their foreign key has been dropped into this table. So this query can answer the question, who has grades or who has enrollment records? There's no clean way for me to find out who doesn't, okay? If I do a left join, well, then I will add students in and we can see here's Brenda and David. And now we have nulls here in this enrollment grade. Um, and uh, what I could do is actually do something like this. So I could answer it with a left join and say, and uh, or where line here, where? And then I could pick something from the child table that would indicate the student has a record, which is a student ID. So, and I'll show it here. So I have to pick from the right table. It has to come from enrollment. Okay, there you go. I'll put that in there. And let me just take this where line out for a second. Okay, so notice that all these students who have enrollment records, there's their foreign key. But Brenda and David, they have no student ID in there, which means they literally don't have any records. So one way in which we could answer this question, who doesn't have uh, student enrollment records, then I could say, and the student ID in the child table, which is enrollment, uh, is null. Okay, these are people uh, who do not have any records listed in that child table. Okay, so that is one way to answer the question. The other way we could do it is um, by actually not joining the table at all. We could do it this way. Okay, so we could have this student uh, reference right here. So I'm going to pick out the student information and then I could say where student ID is in, and then I could do a subquery and say select student ID from uh, the university enrollment table. Okay, so obviously this is a subquery. We can execute that. We see here's all our student IDs found in this table, and I can actually do a distinct here because I don't need all those repeats. Okay, and then it's like saying, okay, well, if we find the values, uh, let me just see here. There we go. If the student ID is in one, two, three, four, or five, then yeah, show them. And of course, now we're going to get these are people that have grades, and then here's people who do not have any enrollment records. Yet another way. A more popular way to answer this question is with a correlated subquery. Now you've seen correlated subqueries in the select line when we want to make our own array hierarchy, right? Rather than using for JSON auto to do it. Here we can use a correlated subquery and it's actually one of the recommended ways to ask the not in question because it's more efficient, more efficient than this way for sure. And so how we answer the question with a correlated subquery is we start in the subquery itself and we just say uh, select all from the child table. And then what we do is, you know, the idea of the correlated subquery, we do a join with the where statement and we reference the table in the subquery to the outer table. So I'm going to alias these to shorten up my code here. And... Uh, so then we would say something like this, where UE, UE and US dot student ID equals UE dot student ID, okay? Because this is a correlated subquery, we cannot 
execute it on its own. It has to be part of a connection to the outer query. Now, what do I do here? Well, when you do a correlated subquery to ask the question, does a parent record exist? Does it have a match in the child table? We literally use the exists keyword. Okay, so there you go. These are the people that have um, enrollment records, and then we can say not exists. Those are the people that don't. Okay. So what you're going to see in our more complicated insert scenario is this use of not exists. So let's set the stage. Uh, and I'll look at the data here that I have. So here I've done a select all from my temp table and from the interest table. So here's my incoming data. Here's what's already in the database. So notice that hockey is already in our interest table and so is hiking okay so we shouldn't insert those into the interest table okay the other thing we're going to do is we're going to only target one column because if we remember in our company database here in this design mode this id when we made it we made it as an identity Okay, so there you go. See, yes, it's an identity. It generates the interest ID for us. So when we do our insert into, we have to ignore this column because we're only referring to the interest column. Okay, so it looks like this as a starting point. Okay, we don't do a select all. We are only going to select interest. And so we're just going to highlight this column right here from the uh, temp people table. Okay, so there we go. There's our starting point. Now, notice we have interests there that are already in um, the interest table. So we can tack this on here and use the right common keys between the temp people table and the interest table. Okay, so if we go back to these select dolls, look at the common key that we can join on. We've got an interest column here, an interest column there. They're both the same varchar size. What is it uh, about varchar 50? Uh, and the data is the same. It's aligned logically speaking. So what I could do is say select all from interest where, and let me just call this um, uh, int. Oh, I can't do that. Enter. So I'm going to say where the interest table dot interest equals, and now I'll come out to temp people, and I'll alias that is tp, and then we'll say tp.interest. All right, so where the interests match, we'll align them, and then we say not exist. Now, when we run this statement now, notice we only have snowboarding puzzles gaming. They are not in our current interest table. And again, if I take the not away, there we see the overlap. These are the two interests that are in the database. Okay, so this is a nice little protection. Now, when we run this select query, we're only bringing in unique values to insert into our existing interest table. At this point, I'm start starting to get ready to do this, insert into interest. And now I do need round bracket notation because as we see in our interest table, it has two columns, but I can't refer to interest ID because it's an identity. So I just jump right into the interest field. Okay. Meaning only inject interest into, only inject interest into interest and the identity will do its charm. Okay. And there we go. We have three rows affected, three things not in that table. And there we go. Here's our new three values in the interest table. Okay, so there you go. A more complicated and finessed version of insert into.